This is an amazing property, no doubt. First one since 1980 in downtown Las Vegas, from ground to all the way to the top. 35 stories. We will take you to Stadium Swim at the top of this building coming up at 6.30 this morning. But right now, I want to show you another unique aspect of this Circa Hotel in downtown Las Vegas. You mentioned this used to be the Las Vegas Club back in the 1930s and 40s. How far we have come. This is the sports book. It is three stories tall. They'll have seating capacity for a thousand people. Derek Stevens, the owner of the joint. Derek, wave to our Channel 3 cameras this morning. Go. Good morning. Hey, man, beautiful, beautiful hotel. You've done a terrific job. And Derek himself is a sports better, and that's why he wanted to make this the centerpiece of the casino because he loves sports betting so much. He wanted to make this a grand experience for everybody that comes into his brand new hotel and casino in downtown Las Vegas. And look at this, just to give you some perspective, I'm standing beneath the three stories of screens that stand above me. There's an escalator. How many times have you seen an escalator inside a sports book? They have one here. And because they have a thousand seats inside the sports book, you can sit at a different seat each day for a year or three because they have a thousand of those seats inside this beautiful sports book. Right now they have the Raiders as a two and a half point underdog. I see that. Derek, you gonna let me buy a half point on the Raiders game? Absolutely. He's not gonna let me buy it. He won't let me buy it up. He won't let me buy it up to the three. He knows better than that. You wouldn't let me do that. So here we are. Downtown Las Vegas, Circus Sportsbook, and I can't wait to show you Stadium Swim coming up at 6.30 this morning. That's on the rooftop. That's also the brainchild of this guy, Derek Stevens. Spoke earlier today with Metro Captain Chris Tamayo. He's in charge of the Southern Nevada Counterterrorism Center, and he tells me that they've been on top of this issue since May when other cities were seeing civil unrest. The civil unrest across America that began in May and continued into the summer is something local law enforcement agencies don't want to see on election night. That's why Metro Captain Chris Tomino, who heads up the Southern Nevada Counterterrorism Center, says they've been following various protests for months. Since then, we've just simply tracked that as we anticipated the run up to the election, and then we will continue to track that in the aftermath of the election until we get. Uh, final answers on who ultimately is elected to be the next president of the United States. One way to ensure calm on election night, make sure the voting process goes smoothly. Nick Trutanich, the U.S. attorney for the Nevada District, issued a statement saying every citizen must be able to vote without interference or discrimination and to have that vote counted without it being stolen because of fraud. The Department of Justice will always act appropriately to protect the integrity of the election process. But officials also realize the election process this year includes an unprecedented number of mail-in ballots. Counting them will likely be time-consuming, but Tamino says that's already been considered. As a result of that, uh, we have uh, anticipated that uh, there's going to be a certain undercurrent of discontent or uh, nervousness as a result of waiting for uh, the results of the election. And if that nervousness leads to protests on election night, and as long as that's what they do, and we don't have rioting and violence and damage to people or property, then the police basically stand back and keep an eye on things. And that's really our role. Yes. Well, it's an off day for the Raiders before moving full steam ahead with the Cleveland Browns, a team that's 5-2, and two, undefeated, 3-0 and oh at home this season. Sunday, I caught up with former Raiders lineman Big Lincoln Kennedy to get his take on the Silver and Black's upcoming challenge. At 3-3 three and three now, mm -hmm. two games on the road, the schedule's supposed to be getting easier. However, it, it does look tough. At least it does to me. What, what do you oh, think it, about it, it going it's tough. You're looking at two really good defensive fronts. You've got Miles Garrett and the Cleveland Browns coming next week where the Raiders have to go to Cleveland. And then you've got Joey Bosa with the Chargers. And, you know, even though in both of them have offensive abilities, so this defense has got to get healthy. We've got to get everybody back. And more importantly, got to find a way to generate a rush. That proves to be a big, you know, a big uh, thorn in your heel, if you will, because now what do you do? If you can't generate pressure with the front four and you can't generate pressure with the blitz, 
how do you get to the quarterback? You can't allow quarterbacks, capable quarterbacks in this league to just sit there and pick you apart. Now, you've got some young quarterbacks coming up. I mean, you got Baker Mayfield who's not necessarily young, but he's not necessarily a Tom Brady or old, can be flustered. you got to stop the run. They did a good job overall stopping the run today, but unfortunately they could not get off the field because too many big plays in the passing game really hurt them. Hey everybody, hello to you. The deadline for each community having its own plan for distribution of one or more vaccines when available is November 1st. And while we don't know yet when a vaccine might be approved, coordinating this effort is critical to the right people getting it at the right time. The White House's Operation Warp Speed put out the request for these plans several weeks ago. The plan includes things like unique cold storage requirements of some of these oh, vaccines, yeah. um, the ability to distribute, um, and to some extent how we will prioritize based on national guidelines. Dr. Steve Fagans is the medical director for one of the largest distribution plans in Ohio. He says drive through clinics for a COVID vaccine are being set up much in the way we now have drive through testing and flu vaccine clinics. The one challenge? We have some complexities because the potential COVID vaccines will have two doses separated right. by three weeks or four weeks. Mm -hmm. The anticipated first vaccines, Pfizer or Moderna, mm -hmm. um, are both molecular vaccines. We've not had molecular vaccines in this country uh, before, but they theoretically should be much better and much safer. We just haven't had a, a reason to do that. A system for tracking those shots now also required. If you get one dose of one vaccine, the second dose must be of the same vaccine. Right. Um, and so that 21 or 28 days, there is a reason for that, uh, the booster dose at the, at the second dose. And so a statewide data system that's privacy protected and very compliant um, is very much the next step. Now, we will likely revise these as we get closer to distribution and guidelines are formalized with who should be given the vaccine first which is likely to be linked to those at higher risk. I'm medical reporter Liz Bonus. We'll throw it back to you. Liz